AliExpress is known for its cheap prices, and let's just say some questionable quality items, all the way to straight up scams. So what would happen if I bought the cheapest graphics card I could find on AliExpress? Would I even receive the item I ordered? Would it be as bad as the cheapest GPU on Amazon? Well, let's find out. So I first started by typing in graphics cards into the search box. I then sorted by price low to high, and ignoring all the other things that aren't actually graphics cards, or just end up being GPU brackets when you actually click into them, we end up coming across this GPU. This particular GPU is the NVIDIA GeForce GT610 graphics card, and it costs approximately 10 Great British Pounds, or 12 US Dollars. It's described as having DDR3 memory, VGA, HDMI, and DVI, a clock speed of 1800 MHz, and it's PCI Express X16, which is already better than the cheapest GPU on Amazon, which was just running at normal PCI. Of course, keeping it the cheapest option, I had to choose the 1GB version instead of the 2GB version, but they had both. I then ordered it and waited a couple of weeks. So here it is. It actually arrived quite quickly in just around one week. So let's unbox this. So it seems that they have properly packaged these items with their own boxes, and they tried to make it look like the design you would normally see your NVIDIA graphics cards come in. I'll give them an A for effort, but honestly the design is a bit weird. And the font and spacing just seems off to me. Here they show the three ports on this GPU, HDMI, VGA and DVI. And on the back they have a lot of information like smart fan dissipate heat efficiently and reduce noise. And low power consumption, high energy saving. Not entirely sure what they meant by smart fan, as it has a tiny fan which never even seemed to change speeds. But we'll get onto that later. It has all the jargon that you would probably normally see on the back of a new graphics card, and it even says NVIDIA Pascal on the back, which is from the 10 series graphics cards, so they definitely just copy and pasted this text from a Pascal card. And it does say that this graphics card supports DirectX 12, which is very welcome, as some GPUs I've been testing, uh, more threads, don't have DirectX 12, so a lot of games won't run. In the box, we get our low profile brackets, which surprised me because most cards like this don't seem to include them. Then we have the graphics card, and that's it. There's nothing else left in the box. You can see straight away that the smart fan that they mention is tiny at about 10 centimeters diameter, and that sits on top of this heatsink, which looks very, very similar to another card we saw before. The more threads MTT S30 looks almost identical to this GPU. It has a similar sized heatsink and fan, and the design is pretty much the same. For the ports, as we mentioned before, it has VGA, HDMI, and DVI. And for the specs of this card, we have 48 cores, 1GB of DDR3 memory, a GPU clock of 810MHz, so they definitely lied when they said it had 1800MHz in the listing, a TDP of just 29 watts, so you don't need any external power connectors, and this card was originally released in 2012. Even in 2012, this was a low-end card, so it didn't perform that great. And now, 12 years later, it's an old and low-end card. So let's find out how it performs in some games. So first, let's plug in this GPU, which is very easy, as luckily, or unluckily, maybe I should say, there are no PCIe power connectors required from the PSU. And then we plug in the HDMI cable, and then turn the PC on. So installing the drivers was a bit weird, as they no longer update the drivers for this particular card. If you go to this link, you can't see the Windows 10 in the operating systems list, but then I found another link, so that was nvidia.com forward slash drivers, not nvidia.com forward slash geforce forward slash drivers. And those drivers installed perfectly once I removed the latest drivers I already had installed. It also installs an older version of GeForce Experience, which is compatible with this card. And now we can see all the details in GPU-Z and see that it is in fact a GT610, but not as if I expected them to send anything else, because it probably would have been better than this card anyway. Interestingly, on GPU-Z, it only shows that the card has DirectX 11. I tried some DirectX 12 games like Red Dead Redemption 2, and it wouldn't start, but I just put that down to the GPU not having enough VRAM. But maybe this card doesn't actually have DirectX 12, so DirectX 12 games don't work. Anyway, I started by testing GTA 5 at the lowest settings, aka normal, at 1080p, and it was already over the video memory limit. In GTA, we got an average of 14.2 FPS with a 1% low of 9.8 and a 0.1% low of 9.6 FPS. So this really wasn't great, as the settings were already on the lowest and it was laggy as hell. I guess I could have turned the resolution down to 720p, but at that point you might just get like an Xbox 360 or something. 
I then tried out Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which was definitely a mistake as we got an average of 5.2 FPS and the game looked like Borderlands 2 or something because of all the graphical glitches. The 1% low and 0.1% low for both was 4.2 FPS, so this game is really not playable on this card. So let's try something less demanding. So next we have Minecraft, non-Java, and we have mostly all the settings on like fancy graphics and beautiful skies and smooth lighting. And the render distance is set to 45 chunks. We got an average of 19.3 FPS with a 1% and 0.1% low, both of 9.9 FPS. Overall, I found Minecraft playable, but I think some settings need to be turned down so we can aim to get about 30 FPS. I then tried Left 4 Dead 2 at high settings with 4 times MSAA anti-aliasing. Left 4 Dead 2 can pretty much run on everything, so hopefully we can see some decent FPS here. We got an average of 14.2 FPS with a 1% low of 9.3 FPS and a 0.1% low of 7.6. The game was playable, but anti-aliasing probably should have been turned off and I imagine we would have gotten around 30 FPS or higher. 14.2 FPS is actually not too bad considering the high settings we had it on. I then tried CS2 at the lowest settings. We got an average of 9.6 FPS and it was pretty difficult to play, yet somehow I actually managed to kill someone. But yeah, CS2 is not playable and I don't think even turning the resolution down can save this. But can it run Crisis? Yes, surprisingly, on the original at 900p, medium settings, we get 18.2 FPS, which is not too bad, but it's definitely not the best. It really doesn't perform the best on this game, but it doesn't really perform that well in any of the games, so I'll take 18.2 FPS. Finally, I ran 3D Mark Time Spy, which is a DirectX 12 test, and it worked, but it was like a slideshow. Our final score was 93. And yes, you heard right, 93. The graphics score was even lower at just 80. I think that's one of, if not the lowest score I've ever seen in Time Spy. So overall, the GT610 is really not the best at gaming, but it still has its uses. The lack of memory is what I really feel holds it back, as 1GB just isn't enough these days. For me, it's still about 100 times better than the GeForce 210 and Rage XL, and it's quite similar to that of the MTT S30. It's not really a gaming GPU, and that was also the case when it was released. So for some light gaming and general everyday use, you can't really expect much more for $12. Thanks for watching.